So I want to start off with a little bit of audience participation here. Uh, by a show of hands, how many of you own a smartphone? So pretty much everyone. And how many of you are on social media? Again, most of the room. Now, how many of you get some news of some sort from social media? A good portion. So six years ago, I was a college freshman, just starting off, deciding what I wanted to do. And I was considering a career in journalism. And I started to notice some blogs and websites becoming more popular in the mainstream. And I thought to myself, yeah, I could do something like that. One day, I was, as I was procrastinating an assignment, of course, I came across this uh, one lesser known website at the time. And they were looking for writers. And I thought, all right, interesting content, witty, a little odd, creative, but funny. I saw a potential market for bored college students. And, but then I thought to myself, you know what? It's not that big, it's not that popular, and the impact isn't big enough. That website was BuzzFeed. <laughs> and their growth in annual readership has grown from 500 million annual views and six years ago to over 6.5 billion today. And um, it just goes to show how quickly something can change. BuzzFeed is now one of the major news sources of our generation. They even have a seat in the White House sometimes on news councils. Two years later, I was in a media publishing course, and our professor was advising us to focus on clear, concise, catchy titles, because no one reads full content. They just skim. They want to get an idea of what's going on. Is it worth it? And I thought to myself, come on, that's not true. Everyone wants to read the whole story, right? They want to know the source. They want to know all the information. They have plenty of time to go through it. Then again, I was that guy reading a newspaper as I was walking across campus, in print, of course, while everyone else was glancing down at their smartphones. That all changed in uh, the fall of 2015, believe it or not. I finally got a smartphone. And the amount of information available at my fingertips was crazy. Sure, I checked the news before, but now I checked the news all the time. I wanted to know what was happening every second of the day. And it seemed like there was a new story coming out every 10 seconds. So I started noticing more things as I was going onto more social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And I started noticing a trend. Uh, what kind of things are we seeing on social media today? We're seeing headlines like fun, n nice feel-good stories. Uh, food, of course, is great, travel. Um, presidential politics, a little satire, drama, um, and what food can tell us about our personality. <laughs> and of course, the two biggest breakups of the year we all know about. So what are we not seeing in our social media feeds? What stories are we missing out on? Maybe you've heard of some of these headlines. Maybe you haven't. Scientific news is flying under the radar. If we don't keep up with the type of stories and the interests, then we're going to fall way behind. There's this gap between the scientific community and the rest of the world. So the stories that the scientists are seeing every day are these. The stories that we're seeing every day are these. So what does it come down to? I think there's three reasons we can really look at. The first one is that, you know, People just don't care about science, right? No one cares about it, we're not interested, so we don't even want to hear about the stories. No one reports on it. I don't think that's necessarily true. The majority of Americans, a lot of studies have showed, are at least somewhat interested in science and technology. But the amount of media coverage that it gets is not comparable. Over the years of 2007 and 2012, the total annual news coverage related to science and technology stories was approximately 2% or less. So people want to hear about the stories. The media is willing to report it, yet we don't see them. So why is that? I think it really boils down to this main point. Scientists do not communicate their ideas effectively to the public. If we can't find a way to communicate our ideas in a way that makes sense, then people, first off, the media doesn't understand it, so they don't know how to report it. And then people become less interested because they're not hearing about it to begin with. Most Americans can't even, live, uh, can't even name a living scientist. 
This study was done in 2011 and recreated just a few years later. And they showed that 66% can't even name someone. So two people that we can name, well, 1% of people can name, are Bill Nye and Neil deGrasse Tyson. So how do they compare to the celebrities we know about? Not that great. <laughs> so our two most famous musicians, Katy Perry and Justin Bieber, also the two most popular people on Twitter. They have 90 plus million followers. And Neil deGrasse Tyson and Bill Nye, who are actually known as some of our best scientific communicators, have only seven, four to seven million. And I think the difference a lot of the times is this social media pre um, presence and the amount of acknowledgement that they're getting. So the amount of tweets that they're sending out gets more following. The amount of news coverage that they get gets more following. The more they communicate the science, the more interest they bring, the more people are willing to look at that and they want to know more. So what happens when we combine science, celebrity, and um, climate change? We get this guy. <laughs> so I guess you guys probably know Leo DiCaprio. Maybe you've also heard that he won an Oscar this year. And maybe you've also seen that speech. So that speech was widely shared around the social media, about three minutes. Only one minute of it talked directly about climate change, yet these were some of the results. So directly following that speech on February 29th, you see this massive spike in, uh, climate, in searches related to these search terms here. So climate change, global warming, hottest year, these were all things that were mentioned in the last 60 seconds of his talk. And you can see that even days after, as that video kept spreading around, more people were seeing it, they wanted to know more. They were asking questions like, oh, is climate change real? Is global warming happening? Only four in 10 Americans hear about climate change in the media once or more per month. There's still a portion of Americans that don't believe in it, that they say it's not happening. And then there's a bigger portion that says it's not due to human activity, which scientists totally disagree with, by the way. Um, another thing we saw from this is the coverage versus the social media reaction. So our climate change related news stories were very minimal after the speech. So you see barely any as compared to the COP conference, which is the UN climate talks, the biggest climate change conference of the year. However, the tweet reaction was much larger. So this is after DiCaprio's talk here. And the other one you see is during the COP. So even though you didn't, they didn't have that media coverage directly related to climate change, they still had that media coverage. They were sharing that video and saying, watch Leo's Oscar speech. He finally won an Oscar, right? So everyone watched it. And then they learned something they weren't expecting because there was a little bit about climate change at the end. So what can we learn from this? It's not enough to just be on social media. NASA is one of the best well-known scientific communities out there, and they still only have a portion of the following of, of many other um, celebrities, as we see. Shakira and Christi Cristiano Ronaldo have something like 100 million people who like their page and tons of people talking about it. NASA has 18 million, but only 250,000 people talking about it. That's a very small portion of the total following. As compared to maybe you've heard of this page, IFL Science. And they have <laughs> more following than NASA, 25 million. But the amount of people who are talking about it is four times more. So what do they do? They make videos. Videos are the new news. Everything you see, whether you've noticed it or not, in your news feed, is videos. Almost every other story, if you check, is going to be a video. And most of them are even watched without audio. So you have videos with really clear, concise information that you need in 60 to 90 seconds. So you can keep up with everything that's going on. Our project is similar to IFL Science, except we specifically want to focus on climate change. So our idea is to take these big research papers that are only reported in journals and let's be honest, pretty much only scientists read research journals. 
and make them in a way that the public can understand. The public likes stories. You guys like stories, right? So scientists like facts and figures and statistics and jargon. It doesn't translate very well. So by taking part in this project, we hope that we can make a change. In order to keep up with this new trend in social media, we have to keep up with what people want to hear and what people are interested in. And I hope we get more science and more climate change news out there. Thank you.